Hey guys. Um, so I'm going to start the lecture for today. We're going to be talking about the Holocaust. So it is a heavy topic. Uh, we're going to be doing or reading like a survivor story. Uh, somebody that survived the Holocaust and you guys will be doing a little activity on that and then looking at some pictures from the Holocaust and I'm warning you right now. Um, it's their pictures are devastating um, and you guys are just going to have like an online discussion about uh, those pictures. So that's the plan for this week. Um, lecture today, just make sure you guys continue your notes on the same spot you've been taking your notes and uh, make sure you mark it off for credit. Um, and um, hopefully it'll be like about 15 minutes or so. So let's jump in. Um, and we're getting super close to the end. So we have this week and next week and then um, kind of like a final week to wrap things up. So uh, we're almost there. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Here is the um, title slide for the Holocaust. So 1933 to 1945, pretty much as soon as Hitler um, took power in Germany um, until Victory in Europe Day when Hitler um, assassin or, sorry, assassinated, he um, committed suicide and um, the Third Reich ended. Um, so that's kind of the time frame. You guys already have some background knowledge on this just because of the um, because of the uh, assignment that you did earlier where you looked at the different sources. So you got a chance to see like how um, Hitler kind of targeted Germans and got them to sort of um, do what he wanted um, and kind of like have this loyal following to lead to the Holocaust. So I'm just going to talk to you about the details um, of that. Typically we would actually do this before we wrote our whole research paper, but um, things are different this time. So there are four stages of the Holocaust. Stage one was Aryan superiority was made into law. Um, so Aryan superiority is that idea that the Aryans were a superior race and they should have more privileges. Ultimately, you know, it was they should be the only ones alive. Uh, that was Hitler's plan. But first it was that let's make laws to um, help them be successful, to, um, and well, more just to marginalize and deprive other people of rights. Um, so this is a video that I'm not going to play for you guys um, that talks about kind of what that looked like. Um, but here are two specific examples of that. So you guys already should know about um, the Nuremberg Laws because of the sources that you analyzed. Um, but Hitler passed in 1935 um, the first set of Nuremberg Laws, and he continued to pass them throughout his time in office um, as the Fuhrer of Germany. Um, so the Nuremberg Laws in 1935 took away the rights of uh, Jewish people. Um, so there were things like they were barred from being citizens, they were barred from voting, they were barred from um, practicing law, dentistry, um, and, and it just got worse and worse. The Nuremberg Laws got harder and harder. Then they weren't allowed to farm, then they weren't allowed to, um, there was, you know, no intermarriage between a Jewish, someone of Jewish descent um, and someone that was considered sort of like pure Aryan. Um, so the laws got harder and harder, making it more and more difficult. The second set of laws, it was things like, you know, that Jews had to wear the Star of David um, to identify themselves, carry the paperwork on them. Uh, they couldn't walk on the sidewalks. Um, if there was like a German that was walking, they had to, it just made life harder and harder. Um, and then the second example was Kristallnacht, which means the night of broken glass in German. Pretty much um, Jewish homes at Hitler and his chief of police, Heinrich Himmler, actually ordered and gave everybody um, the ability to break into Jewish homes and businesses um, and loot them and break the windows and take things and 
burn them. Um, and they were given permission to do that. So it's literally like a law allowing people to come in and attack your business, your home, where you're supposed to feel safest, where you have security. So pretty much after stage one and after Crystal knocked, a lot of Jews started trying to leave. Um, so that leads us to stage two and three. So stage two was Hitler actually kind of like encouraging Jews to leave. So again, it sort of ties into stage one, just making life absolutely miserable. Um, so Jews would flee. That was fine at first for Hitler, but then if you guys remember when we were talking about World War II, Hitler kept conquering more and more land. And so it was like a Jew, uh, a Jewish family might flee make it to France, but then Hitler conquers France. They might flee, make it to Poland, but Hitler takes Poland. So it's like he kept conquering land. And on top of that, a lot of nations actually shut their doors to Jewish people that were trying to flee the persecution in Germany. For example, this is actually a picture of a boat, um, the St. Louis, which had a bunch of um, Jewish refugees on board, and um, they tried to land three places. They tried to dock in um, Cuba, in the United States, and in Canada. Um, a few people were allowed off the ship, but the vast majority, I think like over 900, were sent back to France, where Hitler obviously like eventually took control. Um, and um, there were actually quite a few of the, them that actually were captured and died in the Holocaust. They were like in the United, they were like in Miami, like near Miami, trying to get off the boat, and they did not allow them to. So it was a combination. It wasn't this like anti Jewish sentiment, it was not just in Germany. There's a lot of nations that didn't help them out at this point in time. And then that leads to stage three. So Hitler said, you know, we keep, we still have this problem on our hands and um, what he felt was a problem and so he said let's move them into ghettos um, so ghettos were sealed off cities without access to like health care or good nutrition they literally made um, walls around these places and they had guards um, guarding them to make sure only certain people could get in or out um, the plan was the goal was as sad as it sounds that they hoped they would die or, um, of starvation um, or die of disease. Um, but, you know, you have this entire group of persecuted people, and so they're going to try to fight back and resist in some ways. So, um, you know, they resisted through, they put on plays and concerts and music. They, um, there were people that taught uh, Jewish culture and traditions in, like, these secret schools to try to keep just that tradition alive. Um, and there were also a couple examples of active resistance where there were people that actually smuggled into these ghettos um, that smuggled in weapons and they actually like tried to have a standoff with the Nazi guards and um, ultimately it wasn't successful because um, the you know it was put down but those rebellions were just examples that even though it was absolutely miserable um, they refuse to just give up. Um, so that was stage three. And as sad and terrible as it sounds, you guys, it wasn't fast enough for Hitler um, because they were resisting and they weren't dying off as fast as he wanted. And so that brings him to stage four. And I'm not even kidding when I say German officials, Nazi officials literally sat down in a room and actually they came up with a name for it called the final solution, which was their way of dealing with, um, you know, this, what they called Jewish problem, um, that they had in their country. So they set up concentration and or death camps are two different types um, concentration camps, you worked as slaves pretty much doing work for the German government, the Third Reich. Um, and uh, you were fed just next to nothing. It was absolutely miserable conditions. Um, but even in these concentration camps, the weak were separated from the strong um, and the weak were sent off to the death camps and or killed there. Um, 
many people also didn't survive the train rides where people were stuffed into the train. There were people that died of suffocation because of how much they were packed in. People that froze because of how cold it was if it was during the winter. I mean, there's all sorts of accounts of people not even making it to these camps. Um, Auschwitz is probably one of the most famous death camp. Um, they built at Auschwitz gas chambers that could kill up to 6,000 people a day, um, which is just like horrendous to even think about. So um, I'm going to just continue on this example of Auschwitz. What happened when you arrived um, at, at Auschwitz was um, you were paraded in front of SS doctors. So the SS, remember, are secret police, the shoot softball. Um, and they would determine if you were strong or weak. They also were looking for twins a lot of times because they did all these terrible medical experiments on twins. Like, remember, they would test it on one and not the other or test different um, types of things. So that was terrible. Um, the weak were undressed and told to go to the showers. So they stripped down all their clothes, took off everything, their wedding rings, I mean, like literally stripped to nothing, but they were told you're going to have a shower. So they went into this room, which you guys can see here, and there were some, some of the camps actually even had like fake nozzle heads to make it look like, you know, you're going to take this big shower. So everybody is, is um, stuffed into these rooms, but then they would close and lock the doors, and then from above they would release these um, CO2 canisters and poison gas um, either in from the shower heads or from a compartment on top um, and within a few minutes um, all the people that were in the room would be dead. Um, at first they um, you know had these large pits that they would um, dig and dump the bodies in and they made the prisoners do that work. Um, but then eventually the death pits, be the smell became strong and they couldn't make enough. Um, and so then they later made ovens um, to burn the bodies um, of people that they killed. You guys can see on this map here, um, the green ones are these concentration camps. And then the death camps are sort of all the way over here in Poland, um, a little bit more out of sight, which is why when Russia started to push back, it was actually Russia that uncovered a lot of these um, famous death camps um, as they came in. The United States actually uncovered a lot of these ones here, but the death camps were the Russian soldiers. Um, so end result, you guys, there were over 6 million Jews that were killed in the Holocaust. Um, Poland had um, 2.8 million Jews that lived there that were killed. Um, and uh, there were less than 3 million Jews that were living there prior. So pretty much everybody was wiped out. Um, you guys know, I'm sure this is Anne Frank, where Anne Frank hid um, here in this attic. Um, there was lots of secret passageways and rooms. There were a lot of people that tried to help hide Jews or help them to escape. But ultimately, you guys, um, the Holocaust was just incredibly devastating. And you guys are going to look at a survivor story and you guys are going to look at just some images from the Holocaust and have a discussion. So I hope um, that you guys learned a lot.